Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm excited to talk to you guys. The show has been really great. Woo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so my first question is for Thadia. Um, your character is very serious and started on these adventures as part of necessity. Mm. Um, do you think that there's a part of your character that actually enjoys this life? I think so. Yeah, I think the first, you're absolutely right. It, it is out of necessity at the start. Um, and I don't think she likes Watson very much. I don't think he likes her very much either. And they kind of look at each other as like, mm, I don't want to work with you, but I have to. And they just accept it. But I think after um, maybe, I think after the first episode, actually, she really enjoys that kind of dynamic with him. It's, it's like a game of cat and mice, constantly trying to one-up each other. And I think she really loves um, being with the gang and all of them working together, I think, is something that is, it drives her a lot. And when, when the, the supernatural element starts to hit a little bit close to home, she gets really intrigued to wanting to find out exactly how that fits into their life and how it relates to them. And I think she's innately curious. And once she gets an idea in her head, nothing's going to stop her from, from getting that answer. Absolutely. Uh, Darcy, this question's for you. Uh, your character goes through some really intense and terrifying moments on the show. What do you think sustains her and fuels her to keep going? Um, I think her support system around her is probably the biggest thing that kind of helps her pull through everything. Um, I think the sisterly bond is a really important thing in the show. And, you know, she looks to be for everything. She she wants to be like her. She wants to kind of, you know, she has to lean on her as well. And I think that is probably the thing that keeps her going is be kind of telling her, no, you're not going crazy. You're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And um, I think she believes that. And yeah, I think she just, I think as well for herself, I think, you know, I think she doesn't want to give up and, you know, just kind of, stop kind of you know trying to kind of defeat this thing I think she thinks you know I've got to keep going if for anyone for a sister so yeah absolutely awesome uh Harrison this question is for you uh your character lives in two worlds and the sets yeah. and the costumes are completely different for each of those two worlds uh what impressed you the most about working on this production and like the two different types of sets that you had to work in yeah, I mean, we were very lucky that Netflix really sort of threw, the, threw their weight behind it um, to be able to sort of go from these amazing ballroom scenes in Buckingham Palace and these great stately homes to making everyone go down to a sort of grungy, sewer, mouldy alleyway. Uh, it's two different, very different worlds. And to be able to sort of play in that space as well, which, which was really good fun. I remember like coming back from work and everyone being like, oh yeah, we had a really tough day today. You know, we were like, wading through sewer water we got dirt all under our fingernails what did you get up to and i'm like oh uh, yeah no i was at a um a ballroom party today and uh, i had to got <laughs> i got dressed up like really much it was really uh, suffocating but uh, but no yeah it was it was really fun to play those sort of both sides and to see the grandness that netflix can put into those sort of both storylines absolutely yeah um Thay, i have another question for you what has it been like to step into the part, um, I guess, almost like a lead part in a franchise that's so well known and beloved as the Sherlock Holmes stories? It was definitely a little bit daunting, um, thinking about the incredible fan base that Sherlock Holmes world already has. Um, I think we're all a bit nervous about how that will be received. But I think what's so lovely is that this is a story that we've not really seen, this this way of telling it, the focus on the Baker Street Irregulars, which only are really in four or five lines of the original books um, and seeing that 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 world through our eyes I think is really exciting and I love that these street kids I mean they're they're 17 16 17 so they're just the, the late teenagers and none of them are magical or kind of your, your typical superheroes um, they're just normal kids in a kind of ridiculous extraordinary circumstance that they very honestly say to each other like what the hell's going on I don't know hmm. I'm watching real people try and figure that out I think is is very lovely and and it's a very honest version of it um but then we obviously still have our iconic Sherlock and Watson but a version of them again that we've not really seen before so uh, I'm quite excited to share that with everyone and and 
to, to see what people think. Hopefully they'll love it. I have a feeling they're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're right. We can hope. <clears throat> Darcy, I have another question for you. Um, your character goes through some really scary moments. Um, when you're working on those sets and when you're dealing with um, such intense moments, was there ever a time where you actually were scared or were like, oh, this is so real to me right now? Yeah, I think there were a few moments. Um, I think, you know, I think when you're putting yourself in that position where it is that intense kind of, like your breathing's really heightened and your heart rate's going and you're screaming and running and crying all the time, I think it can be a little bit um, overwhelming at times. But I was really lucky that we had a great crew around us. So we were having a lot of laughs in between that. And, you know, you've got to keep it light and, you know. But I think there were a few moments where I, I kind of took a step back and was like, whoa, this is scary. And I think one of them was definitely when I had I did the scene where I was walking through mud and, you know, it was really deep and, and it was really kind of grim to just walk barefoot through mud. And then <laughs> there's this thing that came out and grabbed me and pulled me out from underneath. And then I was on the floor and there's these things coming after me. And it was all quite, it felt really real that time. And mm -hmm. I can like confidently say any other time when I was doing the nightmare scenes, I felt like completely okay. But then, you know, that time in particular, I remember thinking, like, this is freaky. Like, this is really freaky. <laughs> um, oh yeah. That's incredible. Um, and I guess my last question is for um, Harrison. Uh, what do you find, you know, working on, you, you said you were impressed by Netflix and how much they put behind this production. Uh, what did you find was the most rewarding thing uh, from working on, on this show? Most rewarding thing, um, coming into it uh, and you're told basically that you're going to be spending the next sort of a year of your life with these four other people that you don't really know at all uh, or know nothing about. Uh, and then going to do the read through, starting filming, living pretty much in the same apartment building with Darcy and Liverpool as well. And just gelling sort of straight away uh, was a real, real privilege. Uh, I think it could have gone very differently, but the fact that we were all able to come become so close and become good friends uh meant that those harder days or the stamina of doing a, a, an epic big show like this where you feel like sometimes you could be on your own but you to have the guys there and be so sort of camaraderie and support each other was a was a real treat and I, I think we were very lucky to have that awesome um and then I guess this is my last question and it's for you know kind of I guess each of you but if what is the takeaway that you want your fans to, or your the people watching the show to take with them after they they finish the series? What do you hope they take away with that? I really hope that people, I think all of our, well, B especially realizes that um, she doesn't have to do everything by herself. She, not all of the responsibility lies on her shoulders. She can share that and it's okay to let people in and it's okay to be vulnerable. It's terrifying but it means that something quite exciting is at play there to have those high stakes. And I think um, if, if people can, you know, relate to that and, and see that it's okay to be vulnerable uh, is something that I think would be lovely. I think when you see that on screen and maybe you're feeling it, but you don't know how to articulate it, I think that rep representation is quite important and it, I hope that people feel seen by it. Yeah, I was going to say, I just hope they want more. <laughs> <laughs> I also want that. Yeah, yeah. That's so important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think um for me I think people um in terms of Jessie's storyline as well she kind of feels different or like a freak and like she's not like everyone else and I think I hope people as a takeaway can relate to that and kind of think you know like sometimes different is good and different can be used to your advantage and things that make set you apart from other people can actually be the best things about you and I really hope people take that away Excellent. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for taking the time to speak with thank us. You. Thank you. Lovely to meet you.